Also, you want to make yourself a nice self you longbow like the one over my shoulder. You've got yourself a bit of wood, you've got some time on your hands, and you've got a bit of workshop space to work in. But then you discover it's got a knot. Is that going to make it break? And is there anything that you can do about it? Well, yes, there is. Let's put this onto the workbench and I'll show you what I mean. It's probably a mistake using the macro lens on this camera because it makes these knots look ginormous. But as you can see, compared to the end of my finger, they're not all that big. Now, these ones here, these little black dots, are what I would call pins. Now, I'm not going to worry about those and I'll explain why. Its brother over here is a knot. Now, the knot tends to be from a side branch or sometimes damage can cause something that looks similar, but that generally from a side branch that would have been in the tree years ago. Um, they have a distinct sort of black circular area and usually some pithy material in the middle. Now, obviously, they can collapse in on themselves as the bow is, is bending. If you imagine the, the bow is doing this action as it moves, it could actually collapse the walls of this knot, the inside area being so, so pithy, as I say, and so weak that this actually doesn't really provide any strength when the bow is bending. Now, this particular one is almost gone. It was much more pronounced when I was working on the bow because I've just been taking this down from the square section and started the roughing out. I'm fairly confident, he says, through experience that this one will disappear. I can't guarantee it, but I'm fairly sure it will. The one that causes me concern, and the one that we're going to look at, is this one here. As you can see, this is much bigger. Now, I've started to leave an area of wood around it because I want to strengthen that area. But the other thing that I'm going to need to do is deal with the actual knot and the potential of it collapsing in on itself. You can probably see more clearly on this one the white, the sort of very uh, creamy inside area, which is the sort of soft pithiness, um, which I can just simply I mean, pretty much get out with your fingernail. But around that is left a sort of cocoon of black which is the walls of the inside of the knot. Now, they are very similar in, in sort of uh, construction to sort of coal, if you like. That's what they sort of chip away, much like sort of coal would. Um, so we need to remove this, and we need to remove it in such a way that we can plug it. And what I mean by plugging is we will drill into here so that we get rid of all that uh, pithiness and the black wall. It will leave us with a nice sort of circular area, a nice even area that I can actually then create a plug out of you, put that into there, and that will re-strengthen this area and fill up the hole at the same time. So let's start by drilling into here and uh, seeing what we get. I don't know whether you can see that now. I've used a pin and dug out all the loose material that was inside there, that sort of pithy, pithy material and we are left just with that black wall there now. So that's obviously what we're going to need to drill out. Um, bear in mind when you're drilling, you may want to put the drill bit or something similar size to that hole in there and see which direction the hole actually goes. So you're drilling out the entirety of that branch that was in there. Obviously this particular one slants across, so I'm going to need to do a fairly slanting drill when I actually drill that in. All right, that's the first part of the drilling done. I've um, just used a fairly small drill so as not to go too mad. I'll probably use one the next size up now just to give me a little bit of a clearer and more cylindrical hole there, really. As I'm dealing with very small diameter, ladies' weight type longbow here, I'm obviously going to use a hand drill to do this next bit.
There we are. Yep, well, we've got rid of all the black area now, and we're just left with the orange heartwood. There are many different ways that you could create a plug to go into here using various different tools that create dowels. Obviously this channel really is aimed at people who have no real experience and perhaps haven't got access to tools. So I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way by hand and just carve a plug as best I can to fit into the hole. Now I've got some spare bits of you here. I've just got to choose which colour is going to match the bow best uh, probably that one there we are so let's uh, let's get start making a plug i'd better check that i get the correct depth of the plug that i'm going to make so i just found a tool here that will actually fit into the hole and actually go right down to the base take a rough reading there we are and here's that piece of wood that is going to match approximately in color i've already taken some of it down there using a saw just to get the basic start of the round shape so i can mark off on here roughly where i want that depth to be so i've marked off the approximate depth that i'm going to need to make this and i've made sure my cuts with the saw has gone down beyond that now i'm just going to use a rasp and i'm just going to round this off to as a cylindrical shape as i can get Obviously, as you're going along, you need to check the diameter of this compared to the hole that we made in the bow. So don't forget to keep checking regularly when you get to this sort of stage when we're nearly at the size that we want. Well, I reckon that's nearly about the right size. As I say, I've been checking that as I've been going along and I've rechecked the depth compared to this. So I know how far my little plug here needs to go into the hole. So let's just try now. Okay, so I can feel it's a good fit and I'm having to quite put a reasonable amount of pressure to get that to go in, which is what I want. I want a good fit. I don't know if you can hear the wood creaking there. So there we are. That's a good fit in there. So what I can do now is cut that off relatively flush, not, not entirely, because I'm going to put some glue obviously in there and I'm going to then file that flat once that's dry. Okay, so there's the little plug and that's ready to go in. Right, let's get some glue on there. I'm just going to use some normal wood glue here. Let's put that on, get good and plenty on there. Plenty on the end. I'm going to make sure there's some in the hole as well there. So when I push that in, it actually goes in. Should squeeze in so let's uh, squeeze out all the glue there and i'm going to use this and put a bit of pressure on there make sure that's all the way in there you may find you need to wiggle it a bit you could probably see that I was trying to pop out there because of the air pressure and uh, just work some of that glue around the edge make sure any gaps are filled again put a bit more pressure on there there we go, and obviously we're going to leave that for 24 hours with the magic of television. You'll be able to join me tomorrow in a few moments. Well, I hope you had a nice 24 hours. I certainly did, waiting for this to dry, and it, it now has, so that's all dry. Um, I can cut this top bit off now and do a little bit of finishing with the rasp and file. I'll also be leaving some area around here, so I'll be leaving this a bit proud. I have made a video where I explain about doing that with knots. If you'd like to watch that, that is up on the screen, and it's also in the description box below. So let's get this clamped in and we'll do a little bit of finishing work on our plug here. Let's hacksaw that bit off. There we go, so that's that bit done. And as I say, we can now start work on this area um, by leaving it proud.
There we are, that's going to do the, for the purposes of roughing out and for how far I have got with this bow at the moment. As far as showing you how to plug a pithy knot, that's as far as we need to go in this video. But that's obviously not the end of the tale as far as dealing with the actual knot, as far as tillering it goes. Um, obviously, if you want to see that video that I was talking about where we actually deal with knots and how we raise the area around it to prevent it bending too much and causing any further problems, again, that's in the description box below. And it's also not the only problem that I've found with this stave. So if you'd like to subscribe, then please do, because in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to solve, or at least hopefully solve, another problem, and that is a crack. So yes, join me for that video. And if you'd like to see what happens to this stave in general, the video after the next video should hopefully be me making this into a bow. So please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get told each time there's a new video. And I'm sure you've got other methods of how to deal with knots and how you would have gone about doing this and how I've done it all wrong. Well, you know where to put all those comments if that's what you want to do. Thanks again for watching and subscribing and all those other groovy things, the subscribe buttons on the screen now, along with some other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.